Hi everybody, my name is Oren, so welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to have something a bit different. So I wanted to have a podcast with two game developers for a really long time now, and I ended up having a course with two awesome guys. So one is Noah from Black Phone Pro, and the other one is Andre from SFX Films. They both have awesome YouTube channels, you should definitely check them out. They have devlogs, tutorials, and even more. We actually wanted to have a talk about the game development world, and how you can actually get into the game dev world even at a young age. You can actually develop your own project while listening to us you don't necessarily have to watch the video definitely guys let me know if you want to see more videos like this and let's begin hi everybody and i'm andre as he said from chrome effects films i'm a youtuber that's i guess the most obvious one but i'm also a uh, game developer from the east coast and a film composer so i try to combine all of that into my videos and into my career and different projects that i that I do and, and I like collaborating with different people. So uh, especially talking about and sharing experiences with other developers from around the world. So this fits right in with that. Awesome. Great. Great. And my name is Noah. I'm uh, 17, almost 18 years old. Uh, basically I'm finishing up high school and yeah, I've been really like full time into the game world, the game, uh, game dev world uh, for about one year and a half now. Uh, first of all, I was, just making small games with my brother Liam. And then uh, six months ago, I started the Blackthorn Prod YouTube channel uh, to really yeah, build an audience and uh, hopefully yeah, have that audience to then show my various games that I'll be selling on Steam, uh, possibly Udemy courses also. So yeah, that's, awesome. that's me. So uh, I think we can actually start from the basic questions. Um, how did you guys have uh, started uh, getting into the game development and why? Uh, well, I started, um, as I said, making games. Well, actually, first of all, I was really into uh, 3D softwares like uh, Autodesk Maya and Blender. And my goal really was to enter a company like Pixar. I really wanted to make 3D animated movies. But uh, I realized that I didn't actually enjoy watching them that much, but I enjoyed playing games like a whole lot more. And it's when I discovered Unity that, uh, yeah, I really saw that it was, it was possible to make games you didn't need to go in a huge company you could make something on your own and so yeah i made my very first game and from then on i was i was hooked i just enjoyed it so much and so yeah since then i've been making like 10 i think i've made 12 games and so yes that's, that's really how i started out yeah so i really first started in the in the game industry it's tough to say because you know, when you make your first game, it doesn't technically qualify as in the game industry yet. So um, I don't really know exactly when I made that that crossover, but I started with the Source engine, actually, uh, back when oh, really? Counter Strike Source came out. Yeah, so I started with the Hammer Editor. Um, that was the first real uh, game modding and editing that I did. I would use the the uh, uh, the the terrorist and then the counter terrorist forces, right? And I would create my own maps. And I got really good at, at doing that that quickly, but you know I couldn't really program. Is there any or, program or, like in that engine? I mean, yeah, when there you... there is. Yeah, yeah, it's not really practical, and I didn't know at the time. And I was researching, and I was just when you know when I do when I started that, I was probably maybe 10, 10 or eleven. That was when I was really actually no, I was probably ten because uh, right around that time I was also using Maya. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and and Maya was, you know, I was tr I was just creating simple things in there, and I was I was actually making animations in Maya, but uh, I never really used Maya to translate that into a game engine. But hmm. you know, at the same time, using the Hammer Editor, I was using uh, Alice, which was a software by Carnegie Mellon. So I was using that, and I was trying to teach other people on the forums. So that was my introduction because that was Python or Python and Java, so it's Jython as they call it. Oh. Right. <laughs> And it's still it's still there today, and they still are improving it. Um, so I still keep in touch with some of the guys at Carnegie Mellon, and and even just a little bit before that, my first programming experience was with Visual Basic, and that was probably oh, yeah. when I was when I was around nine. First game ever was in Visual Basic, and it was a math game. I went into Windows Paint, and I created a, an environment of like these two kids that found a spaceship. And they have to use math to open up keypads and get inside the, the spaceship and like solve That's the mystery. Great. Once the ball ball started rolling down the hill, that I started just taking off on my own and getting obsessed in that world of game development and what it could be. 
Yeah, I get, I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Me, it was the same, uh, a little bit the same, let's say. It was my dad who really got me started uh, with uh, programming. At first, I was like uh, not terrified of programming, but I really thought it was something difficult and boring. Yeah. Um, but when I started seeing that you can use programming to make games, that was really different. And so that really pushed me to learn C Sharp with Unity. Uh, and when I saw that my code was actually translated into something that could be playable, yeah, that was really different. So yeah, that's how I learned to, that's how I started to get into programming. Cause it was like, I was using programming to make something fun and, and creative. But you haven't like used any other engine uh, beside Unity, right? Uh, no, no, that's really the only engine I've used. I used uh, a little bit of a Construct 2, yeah. which is uh, a very basic uh, game engine. It's really good for people who, who don't want to program at all because it's just got a drag and drop interface. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot more limited than Unity because it can't handle 3D. And so, yeah, you can only make simple 2D games. But still, it's a nice, uh, a nice engine to have if you're really a beginner and don't want to, to program. Awesome. So let's say we have a young audience because this is the subject and they want to actually get into this world. What engine would you recommend to use? I have kind of a complicated answer for this, so I can, I can jump in here. Um, so my, I thought about that and, and really the answer changes depending on the age that you're at. Uh, if you are, let's say 10 years old, I'm not going to say, okay, download unreal and start messing around with it because it's just the, the complexity it's not possible. Is, yeah. is it's too much. And in a sense of, it's not impossible to learn it, but at that age, you're not thinking, okay, what can I do with the power of the software? You're thinking, I just want to make something cool. And you're not really thinking, okay, how can I use like a, a substance shader? How can I make this reflective surface? No. Right? Like, no, you know, they don't care about that. You know, they want to so, make the next Call of Duty. Yeah, but yeah. even and even even if they want to, you shouldn't encourage them to make it. At no, 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 definitely start not. small. Yeah. So I would recommend because like what what I started, I went through so many different game engines. My goodness, how many did I go through? I probably went through six or seven or something like that, yeah. including Unreal, uh, which I still use now. It's just not in the same capacity as Unity. Because I'm using Unity for an actual product, so that's why I have to spend more of my majority of my time in that. But I honestly would recommend people starting with something like Game Maker or Construct or Alice, because it's not full-on programming. It does part of it for you, but instead of you getting frustrated with all the lines of code, it teaches you the logic and the fundamentals of how exactly, objects yeah. talk with other objects. Because object-oriented programming is a huge portion of game development today. Unity and Unreal are both object-oriented programming, which basically just means for, for you young kids out there, uh, it's it's not, uh, a diff different lines of code are all handled by specific things in your scene. You're not yeah. having yeah. millions of lines of code in one large file, and then different objects are talking to that same line uh, instead, you have different sub files with different lines of code that are all sort of talking to each other, but you can yeah. place these lines of code an infinite amount of times on objects. So yeah, that's yeah. why, yeah, it's like instantiations or instances. So you'll hear that phrase. Yeah. So because of that, I would definitely recommend kids to stay away from the low level programming or something that's really frustrating at first if you don't understand it because the sooner you learn the logic, the easier it is to go from logic to then the harder stuff and more of the the actual, ac the actual hard coding of the yeah. of the of the scripting. Exactly. Yeah, you really have to sort of build a programmer's mindset. So know how to search the internet because it's really important. Me, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm a really a good programmer. I don't know everything by heart or that, but I just, I'm very good at uh, researching the internet for uh, why. Um, like programming concepts. I know how to ask yeah. the right questions for my game. Um, so yeah, as Andre said, I definitely wouldn't go for something too complex at first. Uh, my top pick is Unity. I think it's a great game engine. It's it's, it's really, so powerful. It's really friendly beginner uh, Unity. I think it is friendly beginner also definitely. They actually uh, I think uh, updated uh, a few months ago that they have actually a tutorial inside of unity on how to program with unity yeah uh, that is great that is great yeah it's like a mini game basically about how to use unity and make games yeah it took for you a long time to understand how to code uh no it took what i decided 
that I'm going to actually start learning how to code, that I'm not going to like just back away because of all this this block of code that looks really complex. Uh, I think it took me roughly one month. Awesome. And I made a very simple game, really small, uh, it's called Raining Apocalypse. And basically you just control this little soldier that can move a left or right and dodge meteors. So it was really simple, but it, it boosted my, my confidence so much because I realized I could program. It wasn't just this alien concept that uh, only a few can do and that required you to go to some really like uh, like some university or or stuff like that. It was something that I could do. And so from then on, I, I made loads of games by programming uh, in C Sharp. That, that's kind of tough to answer because again, I by the time I actually started doing just lines of code and yeah. doing something more complex than just something in Visual Basic. Uh, I have already had a, a couple of years of experience with logic, just logic using Alice and Game Maker. Uh, but so, G Game Maker, uh, I think it's not actually coding, right? I mean, I know there's yeah, a small no, part of it. No, no, no. Well, back then, I don't know what it is now, but back then when Game Maker first came out, like they had... Drag, yeah. uh, they, they had Game Maker and then they had Game Maker Pro. And Game Maker Pro was if you paid for it, then you could write custom code. And then once they released the second one, I think they changed it. So now it's it's more friendly because they had to compete with Unity and all these other engines. But uh, you weren't allowed to do it unless you paid money for the software. So I never did it because I wasn't going to pay for the software. Yeah. But to answer the question of how long did it take for me to actually yeah. learn how to code, um, I would say in Visual Basic, which is the, the starting one, I prob it probably took me two to three weeks to really figure it out because it wasn't a lot of programming. And I spent a lot of time just doing simple, simple things here and there, like change this color when you press this button. Because mm -hmm. Visual Basic would create the classes for you. You wouldn't have to do all the class names and define the type. It did that all for you. So I didn't have to know that at that age. But once I actually moved to Unity is when I started using Unity Script and watching tutorials online because at that time, the only tutorials on YouTube were by the Tornado Twins in California. Yeah, yeah. So I, that was all they I had. Always I remember those. Yeah, 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 yeah. everybody was watching those and myself included. And those guys were, they were super helpful, Ruben and, and Ephraim. Uh, but I probably spent a, a month and a half or so probably just trying to figure out how to make a, a ball spawn when you click and have it fire and something like that. So my first game was, was with, with full on coding. Yeah. was was something like that. So total over the course of say visual basic and then have a few gaps of years where I was using other programs and yeah. then actually starting unity, I'd probably say a couple months. Yeah. But there's the, another uh, big question. What is the best game engine? I know there is a lot of uh, arguments, I guess, between unreal and unity. Yes, because uh, I think Unreal has maybe better looking 3D graphics. Uh, that's what it's, I think, famous for. But uh, again, for beginners, I think the Unity is yeah definitely better. As Andre said, yeah, Unity, I think, for beginners is, is great. And even for, for veterans, uh, you, you can make some amazing looking things in Unity. Uh, you've just got to see their uh, Made with Unity um, uh, website. And there you see like games like Inside. Uh, Hollow Knight, all these games were made with Unity, so yeah. so yeah, you can definitely make some amazing stuff uh, with that game engine. But of course, nothing stops you from going to Unreal once you're yeah uh, more used to making games. Once you've maybe created a few things with Unity or or Game Maker, yeah, Unreal Engine could also be great. Here, here's a couple of things about um, the two different engines. So, first of all, when you say what's the best engine to use, you have to consider person and yeah. project. You know, what are, what are you trying yeah. to actually yeah, yeah. create? And in terms of Unity uh, in the company and then Unreal as a company, uh, remember that Unity is made by just the company internally and they don't have teams externally that are developing stuff and no community that's submitting stuff and then they put in the software. Now they just buy out different asset store assets because they're like, oh, we like this tool and we're going to implement it. But that's not really the same thing. And the thing about Unreal is that Unreal is developed by hundreds of people because it's hundreds of people designing their own parts of the engine, and then they kind of mix it all into this engine and then release it in future update, updates. So it's not just Unreal that's developing it, but they're incorporating a lot of other people's code. So the engine oh, yeah, itself yeah. is designed by hundreds of people that are not even at Unreal, which yeah. makes it a lot it's more huge. refined and a lot yeah. more, yeah, it's a lot more, um, it's, a lot, it's a lot faster in its progression development. So Unreal, 
if you and another reason is just Unreal is a, is just a more powerful engine, no doubt about sure. it. And that's why a lot of companies will use it for their AAA programs. Do you have any examples? King. Why is it uh, more powerful? Um, yeah, so a lot of companies don't use Unity for AAA graphics or some major game. Like you, if you look at any any major game, Batman was, the Arkham Knight, I think it was made in Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an example. It's basically uh, it's a very powerful engine, and it's affordable to use. There's there's a lot you can do with the engine. It can do everything that Unreal that Unity can do, but it can do it on a larger scale. It's just it it is harder to use. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to get to get into, yeah. and it, it's it's just generally there's there's a whole different workflow with it. But, but Unity uh, is really good for prototyping and little things, and that's kind of why a lot of games will will use it for smaller projects. And that's why, I mean, if you just off the top of your head, try and name name the biggest game you've ever seen made in Unity. Um, I would say my the the current games I'm playing are all with Unity One or in the yeah. uh, Firewatch also. Okay. Firewatch. So here's the thing about is both, both those games. Um, they're not very massive in scale, and Ori is a 2D game, of course. Yeah. True. So if you just think think about that, and then you think, okay, what's made with Unreal? And off the top of your head, you can you can just throw out uh, Gears of War, all the Batman series, mm -hmm. a huge majority of games. I'm just yeah. blanking at the moment, but just those two alone. Just with that, you can tell that they're already massive in scale to honest, compared to yeah. Unity games because sure. on a technical scale, Unity can't really support stuff that powerful yet. Um, and it, it, it's just because they're a few years behind in that sense and they don't really have this external development process like Unreal does. But it's really good for indie studios and it's really good for prototyping. That so if true. you're trying that to make true. a small game, there's nothing wrong with Unity and it's, it's very easy to do. They have their own set of tools and... That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with either one of the programs. They're just designed for different applications. And exactly, and it, yeah, the game I'm working on right now in Unity is probably one of the biggest games that will be released in Unity. And yeah. I mean, in in the time being, that when it comes out. So what we're trying to do is really trying to push the the limits of the engine. Are you working but, on it uh, alone or with a team? No, I I have uh, I have a couple people working on it. Yeah, but it's. It's just, you know, we're running into that now where we're running into these technical limitations that Unity has uh, just because that, you know, would be with just the snap of your fingers would be gone in Unreal. And that's mm. just that's just the reality of the engine that the engine uh, Unity is very um, their focus. Their focus is very different than Unreal. Yeah. Unreal is really, really focused on making their engine more powerful and more more futuristic. Really, yeah. it's, it's, uh, for lack of a better word. Unity's goal, I think, is really to open the doors to many, many indie, uh, many game developers. So if it be the be the young or even just small teams who might not want to make a, a huge AAA looking game, uh, Unity is absolutely awesome. Uh, and that's what one thing I was wondering is, can Unreal uh, actually handle 2D uh, as well as Unity? Uh, it can. Yeah, it can, it can. All right. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. You know, a lot of people stick with Unity for 2D just because they have that uh, that 2D editor in there, which is another yeah. reason it's like, okay, then use Unity because it does this one thing better. It's very so, accessible, that's true. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is more expensive to use Unity because Unity takes a much bigger cut of your sales uh, than Unreal. Really? Than, uh, the, um, like, yeah. They take, I think, uh, I'm not sure how to say the number, but they, they take uh, only once you pass a certain number from your profits, right? Yeah, uh, yeah you have to get these different Unity versions. I think with the, un the free Unity version, yeah. you can only get 5,000 uh, euros uh, from your game. And then there's the Pro where you can get 200,000. And then, yeah, if you get the... Uh, no, the, the Plus is 200,000. And then if you get the Pro, uh, you're unlimited. But yeah, there's that, there's that limit of uh, money you can earn with your game. If you don't but get the actual paid version, but also if you even if you have the unlimited version, they still take the same cut. There, there's still, a lot yeah. of stuff. They so so there really isn't that much of an advantage to buying the different versions, um, to be honest, because they they'll take a cut either way. So that's been one of the one of the criticisms of the engine. But you know, it, th there's people that use them both for different applications, and you know, you just that's just the way the world works. You know, mm -hmm. there's these companies out there. They own the software. They take whatever cut they want. But you get to make your game with it, so it's you just have to kind of deal with both sides of that. So depending on what kind of game you're making, my original point is that 
that's going to determine what engine you're going to use. Uh, remind me another huge topic that happens as an indie game developer. Yeah. Wake up, yeah. don't want to do your game anymore. Uh, it's boring. And what do you do now to get the motivation back? I have a my work ethic. Honestly, even when I lose motivation on something, I, I try to set smaller goals in the sense of uh, if I lose motivation in something, you know, I have to reevaluate it. I have to say, okay, what is the purpose of this project? What do I want to get out of it? And is it worth the time that I'm putting into it? Because my time is extremely valuable to me and as it is to anyone else. Yeah. And as you get older, your time becomes more valuable because that's when you start realizing how much your time is actually worth. Mm. Um, Definitely. And, and at that point, when I lose motivation in something, I will often make a, a quick decision saying, okay, what can I salvage of this before and throw it away? Because if I lose motivation and I reevaluate it and say, this is not going to make any money, it's taking too much time, you know, that's it. Let's just stop. You know, let's just cut the cord. So I will often do that. And then the project will just uh, be polished as a polished prototype. And then I'll often put that to the side and say, okay, it might come back to this later. But sometimes it will turn into a project that will become a prototype that I would show on my YouTube channel. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of those prototypes are also failed games. I don't say that in the videos. I'm saying yeah. it now because you know we're talking about it. But a lot of those were potential game ideas that just didn't work. And then I said, all right, it doesn't work. That's it. Throw it away. But hey, now I made a fun you, video. Yeah. At least so yeah, it's exactly. just practice, yeah. And if it's an actual product, uh, I would often work with somebody else on it. So there's that. There's the credibility, that, or not the uh, credibility, the accountability. Oh yeah, yeah. Of I having see someone that. else, yeah. but also having a second mind on it. That is the other half that's sort of motivating and pushing the project forward. So if you stop working at any point, it's still pushing forward because then when they show you what they did, you can get excited about what they did and say, "Oh, that's so cool!" Now let that me do so this true. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to feed off of each other. I'm, I'm literally right before this call, I was, I was talking with my producer for the game. We were talking about, yeah, uh, a certain part section of the game that we're trying to develop for a, a demo. And we were bouncing off of ideas and basically saying, okay, this is what we have right now. And then he's making something really cool right now. And I was looking at it and saying, that's awesome. Now I'm getting uh -huh. a bunch of ideas and saying, okay, now how can we put this in the game and, and all this stuff. So yeah. True, a lot yeah. of it is, is that accountability and making sure you understand fully if a game is worth your time and what your end goal is for it. Yeah, yeah. on my YouTube channel, I also did a devlog on the game I was developing. It was called The Fire of Belief. And uh, yeah, by making a devlog and regularly posting, like every week I was posting a video uh, on the progress of my game. And though, yeah, I had some moments where I was really uh, a little demotivated, not wanting to continue my project, having that devlog on the channel like really pushed me to, to continue and ultimately finish the game because I knew others would otherwise see that I didn't finish it and yeah, that would uh, that wouldn't be good. So that really pushed me, that accountability, having that, that devlog of me saying that I'm making this game and that, yeah, I intend to finish it. Yeah. So that, yeah, definitely helps. Definitely helps uh, me complete the game. Having the people in there and the subscribers on YouTube exactly. be your motivation, that helps. Like right now I have... I don't know how many I have, something, 16,000 something subscribers. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That is interesting in the dynamic that it's a, it's a certain amount of pressure of when I have to, when I'm working on a project and I promise 16,000 people and saying, hey, this video is going to come out. And now I'm like, oh, great. Now I have 16,000 people waiting for it. <laughs> exactly. So, in that the really sense of. It pushes you to make sacrifices and, and get it done. Yeah, in a sense of Dead Lab, which was one of my games that went viral a few years ago, I was working on a major update for it. And when that update ended up, I was posting updates in the, the devlog for my followers, and they were all getting excited about it. And I didn't end up releasing the bit because ah. um, the project ended up turning into a whole different thing and ended up becoming uh, a different project. And then that evolved into something else, which evolved into something else. And then by then, I was already getting potential investors involved. And then I was like, okay, now I had, oh. now it's just in a whole other category where I'm just literally not allowed to show it anymore. I'm not allowed to post it. So therefore, right. I can't actually post it and share it with anybody anymore, which was really sad for me. But I just know, I'm like, okay, but what I'm doing now is going to be so much better than what you guys were expecting. Mm. It's just, you know, there's there was that motivation uh, at the time. And all the, the people that were waiting for it, saying, get it done, get it done, we can't wait to see it. And I was like, oh, great, all these people are going to see it. And 
I you know, know. <laughs> I tried it. Yeah, but I tried to channel that now because even with the new game, once we release a trailer for it, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be an international release. So there's going to be a lot of people waiting for it and expecting it. So there's going to be a lot of pressure and motivation there on that crunch time, that four month window of crunch time to make sure it gets done. That so. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what is that game that that went viral? What what's the name of it? So I can maybe check later. It's called Dead Lab. Ah, oh, okay. I'll yeah, write that down. I, 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 I played it. I think it's a it's a horror game, isn't it? I think. Yeah, it's a very old horror game I made. I actually made it when I was fourteen, I think. Wow. And that's then awesome. when I was sixteen or something, I made an update for it, and then Markiplier played it, and I didn't know because I didn't really mm -hmm. I didn't really follow these guys. And my friend yeah. messaged me. He's like, "Hey." Markiplier just played your game, and I'm like, wow, oh, okay, this... let me see. And he played it, and it was really funny to watch. And then I was like, oh man, if I know anything about how YouTubers play games, is if one big guy plays it, Everybody, all the other guys yeah. will play. It. So I updated the, the next day. I fixed a game breaking bug. I basically just released a massive update for it. And then the next day, I got a, I saw a video from PewDiePie, and he played the latest version. So I got it. He actually broke the game in the video, but then he fixed it himself, and nobody caught it but me. But um, that was kind of scary to watch. I was like, oh, man. And it had like three and a half million views. That, that is amazing. The, all the audience that you got with those YouTubers, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, I got like in the course of like a month, I think it was like half a million downloads. And, and it was like uh, 12, was 13 Kate. million views on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did end up getting a revenue share for it, which is what motivated me to sort of put some of the funding towards the next game, sure, uh, yeah. which then turned into something else that, now I can't even show because now it's just like I just can't. I sort of canceled the project. So what are you guys working at the moment? I'm currently working on a a small platformer. Uh, the story is not it's not going to be any, anything commercial. I'm just going to put it out on itch.io uh, for people to play out. Um, it's uh, basically uh, the game concept is the game versus its creator, and so you're you're playing this little game that's telling the story of its development and how the creator almost gave up on it, uh, how it almost abandoned abandoned it due to comparing uh, him with other games, uh, due to bugs, maybe procrastination. It's really it's sort of my way as a, a message for me to tell how the difficulties of game development, not only on a technical side, but also on a, a mental side, how you might compare your work to others' work and quickly get discouraged or how you might just get lazy, um, or even just yeah, just give up on your projects you don't like and you've got all these other ideas. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my small project that I'm currently working on and that I've almost completed now. Oh really? Awesome. Yeah, I mean, in terms of just the game industry, uh, I'm always working on some little prototypes and and things AR related and VR related, but my my massive game it's not quite announced yet, so I can't really say much about it. But it is a uh, it's a narrative driven first person game uh that has a lot of mystery in it a lot of a lot of thrills the universe is becoming very defined and and once it's announced you'll see what i mean but it's not exactly sci-fi but it's um very focused on uh, the story elements driving driving the game forward and uh, there's a lot of mystery in it and it's and it's right, going to be out yeah. for switch so oh, awesome awesome uh, switch only switch or will it be on other consoles it will be on uh, plenty of other consoles, but uh, they're not announced yet, and uh, okay. I don't have those dates yet, so I can't I can't say. All right, all right. And you're awesome. working on your uh, book, right? Yeah, so I, I am working on a book. I'm working on um, a book about indie game development and, and sort of reaching your full potential at a young age, and it's directly based off of my personal experiences and what other people in the industry and industry veterans have told me. Um, so I have a few interviews in the book uh, with different developers from from in, in the industry, and and that's going to be um, available soon. I haven't uh, quite announced a release date yet, but that's going to be really helpful for uh, any young developers trying to get into the industry, and even uh, high school and college age, because cool. there's there's a lot of stuff in there about uh, what you can do now, even if you missed that middle school window or early high school window. You know, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can still break into the industry. Of course, yeah. Uh, especially now with the uh, internet and like all the tutorials you can find on YouTube or on Udemy uh, or on a platform called uh, Plural Sites, you can definitely learn at any age, any skill, especially game development. 
with like yeah the game engines like Unity and Game Maker. So it's, it's never too late. That that's for sure. One last thing uh, for young indie game developers is to yeah especially have fun. That's the most important. Uh, really enjoy what you're making, and from then on you'll either get hooked. You'll know that you want to make games, or you yeah you'll just simply you know you don't want to make games. But yeah you just got to try try and make something that you enjoy. Don't spend too much time uh, looking for the the perfect tool. Uh, even if you have nobody to make uh, games with, just you can make it all by your own. That's for sure. Uh, and so yeah, yeah, just just have fun. That's the really important. And something I want to throw out there also for not just young developers, but any but anybody that's really trying to just start making games. Uh, it's very easy to get caught up in the scope of your game, and you can think, I want to make a game, but I want to make it. I want to have this huge open world RPG. Like, I'm just going to stop you right there. Don't even think about it. Just do yeah, something yeah. small. Yeah, of course. Start something small. Focus on small prototypes. Practice the programming. Practice on little concepts. Because if you look at an RPG, the part that makes it fun is not the fact that it's an RPG. It's those little elements and the little gameplay focused core mechanics. That's yeah. the stuff that makes it fun. So focus on that and then work your way out. I always try to do something bigger than what I'm attempting. I always try to make my games feel bigger than they really are. And that's mm -hmm. just a personal design choice. But I try to keep things small in scope, but make them feel bigger. That you can do. And that is awesome when you can do that well. I still have some trouble with that, but I try to simulate that with my games. But make sure that your the core focus of your time is on the simple mechanics and actually making sure that your game is fun because that's the stuff that matters. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think when you create a character that moves left and right, you will already be excited. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, especially even if you're like a young uh, game developer, maybe somebody's not even made a game before, and then you want to make something huge, you're obviously, well, there's very high chances you won't succeed. And so that, yeah, will have a, it'll, it'll be a huge blow to your confidence. And so instead, instead of that, just building small games uh, it's going to grow your confidence so much and it's from there that you're going to create your your dream uh, your dream game yeah so i think that's about it yeah yeah me too uh, thanks so much orin for for having me here i've had a i've had a real great time uh, talking to andre and orin so yeah uh, hopefully you also found what i had to say interesting uh and yeah all right cheers uh thanks for thanks for having me and and uh, i hope you guys found what i had to say interesting hopefully and that you can get something out of it i'm i'm glad that i i can be able to share this with you guys so thank you guys for watching the video it was really awesome to have a chat with them you should definitely check them out the link is in the description they have devlogs tutorials as i said and yeah i really do appreciate that you stuck till the end and you know i'm gonna see you next week or this week depends on when this uh, video is going to be uploaded so thank you so much and i will see you next time